extremely difficult and some some positions a lot more difficult than others. Um, so I'm bound to have upset a few people along the way, but hey ho, that's life. Uh, what I will say, there was a number of players who've had spells with me at other clubs, so it's 1 to 11 at Southport. So, the my best 11 at Southport for different reasons. In goal, incredibly difficult. To, you know, I was lucky, I've had two great keepers during, I'm not saying Dan and Charlie aren't great keepers by the way, but over the course of the, the thing, two keepers who both won championships with. Uh, Dicko was obviously a, a proper legend. But I plumped for Tony Mack, uh, strange character, <laughs> brilliant, t typical keeper, uh, great lad, uh, obviously played for me at other clubs, but I think I had him since he was 18 years of age, you know, he's still growing strong now, he's 37, been brilliant, uh, and I always envisaged he'd, he'd always be someone who'd end up on my staff with me, so uh, yeah, so I plumped for Tony as my goalkeeper. Right back. I think this was probably the easiest one for me. Uh, it's Kevley. Um, first day I ever, ever had the misfortune, so pleasure of managing my actually transfer listed him. Uh, loads of clubs kept on coming in for him, and I kept on saying oh, he's not available or he's going nowhere. Or I, I did everything I could to put it, put it off, so he was never ever leaving, but he did get transfer listed. And then he grew into probably being one of the, my favourite all time players, about the pleasure to manage. Great centre half, great right back, actually. But before he got the bad injury, he was playing it in the middle of midfield when we were flying. Uh, so great all-round player. But again, come back to Tony, great character, uh, brilliant at any club. He did come with me to Telford as part of my staff, and it was very, very good. Um, it's just a shame he actually grew up, got a proper job and proper life, and uh, he, he couldn't really stay. And he just now makes kids for a living. The Penguin, Chris Lever. I said, I had a choice of two to be honest at that left back. Uh, there was only two ever entered into my mind, was, was Chris and Jerome Fitzgerald. Uh, I've gone for Leeds because he's ended up, he's won two leagues with me. Uh, he did, he, he come to Telford. Uh, strangest conversation I've ever had in football in my life was when he was coming up to leave Telford. And uh, he said to me, he said, I'm, I'm not enjoying my football. You keep playing me left back, and I went right. And he goes, "I'm a centre half." So leaves. You've been playing for me for the last six years. You've only just decided to tell me. <laughs> but I think <laughs> probably sums it up. But the first when I first took over at Southport, he come in and said, "I can't take a pay rise." I said he was on absolute buttons. It was an insult what he was earning. I said, "No, I'm not. I'm not asking you to take a pay cut. I'm not even going full time to part time. I'm actually giving you a rise." And he went, oh, 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 well, I prefer to stay full time. I said, well, all right, you can stay full time, but I'll just give you Monday, Wednesday, Friday off. And he went, oh, okay, thank you. And then just left, but he, you know, unbelievable defender, unbelievable. Uh, I remember the first time we got a penalty, and I'm screaming, leaves, leaves. Everyone's gone, Chris Lever, really? And he's gone up against York and put it in the top corner, and then he just, we never ever seen him miss one, did we? He was just missed the consistency, and, you know, lovely lad as well. Ale picks himself, doesn't he? Um, and again, you're turning around and you're saying, I've had some really good ones. Have you? Grandy had a great spell with me. Stephen Ackrig had a great spell with me. Um, Earl was a shoe in, so Earl was always going to be in the team. You know, everyone loves Earl. Uh, you know, I've got it right by actually playing him on the left hand side of the, the partnership and banned anyone from passing the ball to him. I was obviously put him on the right right way, pathway. Uh, but I, I look back, he, he was part of the 0-4-5 championship side and he made a lot of appearances in that, even though he start, probably started that as third choice centre half under behind Farrell and Fitzy. Um, but in 9-10, in you know, he was a rock. Uh, the amount of games he's played and as I said, as a person, you know, that's why everyone loves him. Um, you know, he, he's well and truly a proper legend at the, at the football club. So he was a shoo-in. And then I had a really, really big decision to make. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned Akers and Grandy and etc. But um, Neil Fitzhenry, Farrell Kilban, you know, everyone knows how close I was to Fast still am. Great lad. But 
I've actually gone to Fizz because I think he was the most influential sign and I ever made at Southport and still is to this day. I, when he came in, he came into what I would consider one of the worst teams I've ever seen in my life. And putting him in the middle of the back four actually just shut up shop. Uh, and we, we really, really turned the corner. And Barry Jones at the time, I, I was here as a player. Barry Jones and Neil Fitzendi, that first season when we were an absolute free fall, went together and, and they helped us get out, out of that league in the first year into the Conference North. So, uh, class player. Should, shouldn't have been at the level, but obviously he's had two serious knee operations and he ended up there. He went on to be a physio. Really moved, really miserable. Very, very smiled. <laughs> Great player. Carl Baker. Well, well, yeah, the story seems to be jumping into my mind before <laughs> I start talking about it. There, 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 is, there will have been no one as, as gifted as Carl has played for Southport, in my opinion. Uh, and his career has gone on. We've seen him mature from a young lad who got sacked by the council because he was already uh, on a written warning for playing whilst off sick. And then when he went back, they gave him loads of leaflets he had to deliver as a bit of a punishment. So Carl, being the brightest nut, decided to throw them all in the bin and thought, I've got that done quickly. So he, he quickly had to probably have to concentrate on his football, but you know, he's gone on to have a stellar career. Uh, and people forget how long he was here. You know, he had four seasons here, Carl, and played an awful lot of games. Again, he's up there with Earl when you know, the fans relate to him. Um, him and the other person who's on the opposite flank have probably won more games for me individually than anyone else. Uh, but. You know, someone, and the, the best thing I say, he's someone I can, I can call a proper mate. And you know, we're still regularly in contact with him to this day. He's never forgot where he's come from. You know, he's, he's opened his own business, his own academy. He's grew into a like fabulous young man. He's got three great kids and you know, happy family. So you know, he's done amazingly well. If, if you turn around and you think that I've been blessed with the players I've had in the middle of midfield, if you say you've got Dom, you've got Alan Moog, and you've got Sid. Uh, Kevin Lynch had a really good spell. Liam Blakeman was outstanding for me. Uh, Godfrey had a great spell in the middle of the park. Uh, Morgs now, as I said, but I've actually done it on the back of Southport in, in what is important. So the first one that I've picked is Michael Powell. A, he was involved with both the championship sides. Uh, he was a young lad coming through, and I think anyone will remember his debut, which was away at Hucknall in one of the most testing times that I ever were. It was the Tuesday after the Reddish debacle and uh, Sid was suspended and we had to make a decision. I remember Charlie was fuming that I'd actually picked Powell. Uh, but I had great faith in him and he never let me down. So, you know, he was part of the first championship side. He was massively instrumental in the second one. Uh, he's had really good spells, but he was one of ours. He, he come through the club, um, again, turned into a, a great kid. Um, a bit touchy at the start, so uh, he nearly got sacked for getting sent off that many times in the reserves. But I think if you go to nine, ten, when him and Alan Moogan play centre mid midfield together, you know, it was a great partnership. Uh, and you know, Pauli chipped in 15 goals that season. Great in both boxes, but great lad. If you turn round and you say oh, turning points, turning points in my career. 100%. My first ever sign as a manager, that was at Runcorn. My first sign at Southport. Uh, he actually left after we won the league in 4 5 and moved on to Staley Bridge because I, I don't think he thought he was going to play as much as he should have done, as he probably would have done in the conference. And, uh, but when we were struggling, he came back and he was again. He's gone into a change room which was a little bit fractured. Pulled it all back together, we went on a great run. So it's not only he was that instrumental in both championship seasons, he was assistant manager in 9 10. Uh, I don't know which one kept us, I kept him saying or he kept me saying, I don't know. But it, it just clicked. Uh, still go out regularly with him, still see him all the time. But you know, when he come into Southport, when I first come, you know, I come as a 33 year old young. So, manager i come in and appointed him club captain straight away so you can imagine how hard he must have found well i thought he would have found but he didn't knowing him he's gone in sorted the dressing room out fell out with all so-called people and uh, he turned into his changing room and we, we really missed him when he left uh, when he come back and then he come with me to bersco 
uh, and then gradually it just went from there. Uh, but 9, 10 and 10, 11, whatever, when he was just a man who had great times. Sean is someone who I've known, obviously, with his dad. Uh, so when I first played with his dad, I'm going back to when I was, what, 19, 20. So Sean was just this little rug rat who turned around and he, he grew. I actually think I influenced a lot of his attacking play. Certainly taught him how to fall over in the box. Uh, but a brilliant, brilliant individual player. And as I said, alongside Carl Baker, you know, them two probably won more games for me as individual players. I know he's gone on to have a good career. He should have gone into the league a lot earlier than he did. Uh, he probably should have grew up a lot earlier than he did. <laughs> As I said, but you know, he, he's been outstanding. Still is outstanding now. Uh, great kid. Uh, his, his dad was the best player I've ever played with. So he's come from good stock. Uh, obviously his dad was also the assistant manager in 045. So, uh, but him and, him and Baker down the wings would have been unbelievable. Forward-wise, Teddy Fern has had one season here where he was good as you'll ever see. 41, 41 goals in a season, but it was only one season. Um, Kieran, when I first signed him, I signed him originally for Bearscott, and uh, every year just got better and better and better. And I think he got the goal and boot the Conference North. The two seasons he played, in, two, three seasons he played in it. You know, he, 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 he was the best striker in the league. Uh, he set up the tone because of his work rate. Super bright lad, lovely lad off the pitch as well. Uh, good family, they always come and supported him all the way. Uh, devastating loss when he decided because of work, he couldn't come with us into the conference. Uh, but, you know, he was still playing last season. You know, he, still, he won the league a couple of years ago with Warrington. Uh, went on and on and on, just phenomenal. Uh, so, I actually stand, he was the stand, the outstanding centre forward goal scorer during that I've had. So, Keane was a shoo The one person you would never, ever, ever want to mark. Neil Robinson was the most complete forward. Physically like an ox, quick as anything, unbelievable in the air. And when he first came, obviously I'd, I'd had him younger, a lot younger when he was at Rugby Pool. He went to, into the league, he went to Prescott and then to Tommy Sullivan into the league. But um, when he came to Southport, he came as an out and out goal scorer and he played off Dales. And it, but when we signed Fernsey, Dales was still young. So it actually Robbo, it was going to be Robbo and, and Terry Ferns. But what Neil Robinson done, which I don't know whether many people do, Neil Robinson sacrificed his own game to get the best out of Terry Ferns. He went from like 15 and 15 to like 10 in one season we won the league and Ferns he got 50, uh, 40 odd. So he, he was the ultimate team player, great lad, not a full shilling. Uh, he put his head in a cement mixer. Uh, but technically he was very, very good as well. He, he, he had everything and one of the most pleasurable things that I ever had to do in my career was actually, he, he, he left Southport and came with me to Bairsco in what I would actually consider the deal of the, deal of the century. Uh, but then I had the pleasure of selling him back to Southport because he did want to come back to Southport, he didn't want to ever leave really. I, I then sold him back for eight times the amount I've actually bought him for. So yeah, certain chairman wasn't happy but br brilliant deal. And then he come back and I obviously inherited him back. So then I had, you know, Dales, Robbo, Keenan, and Tony Gray. So, you know, what you'd give for that now? You couldn't have a squad without Matty McGinn in it. Um, play, he played everywhere. I said, well, I think he's the most successful player in the Conference North history, hasn't he? He's certainly won. He won the league. He won the league here once with me. He won it at Telford with me, but he won it at Chester also. But he should have won the first one with me. But being a nice lad, he didn't want to leave Runcorn in the lurch. And he should have come and everything was agreed and he felt obligated to stay, uh, to see them sort of like over the line, which was a mad decision as far as I could see. But, and then Sam Matnut came, if you remember. Uh, but Matty, Matty had a stellar career. I'm not surprised he actually retired through a bad shoulder with his long throw. But, uh, wonderful left foot, great kid. Uh, 
talented, technical, should have played, should have played in the football league. He's been brilliant for me. Um, again, should be in the football league, 100% a league player. Um, but David Morgan, since the first period, obviously he was another one when I first came. I think he was transfer listed because he was looking to go to, go to uni, uni and it wasn't going to work. But you know, he signed a new deal, knuckled down. He's ended up being the captain. He's very similar to the profile of your prices, your doms, your moogs. Uh, you know, he works hard, sets the tone, he's got a goal in him. So mind you, I've just said Tom and Moves in that conversation and then said I got a goal in him. But uh, you know, it's been great. I, and I think he's a proper proper lad. I think he's great for the football club. Uh, I think he's proud to, to captain the club and uh, I think the fans relate to him. Uh, 100 percent a good 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 player. I think uh, Steve Daly, as a, as a kid, you know, he, again, he, if you, he'd be probably the first. He was an honest type. He'd probably be the first to turn around and go, yeah, I should be in the team, but I don't understand why he isn't. And like, he'd say that himself. Uh, he grew at Southport, uh, but again, he, he won he won leagues here. Uh, went away, won him at Royalston. Um, led the line, developed into a top centre forward. By the end, he was raw when he first came, relied on pace. But by the time he, he finished, he was the top all-round link-up player. He, you know, brilliant in the air. I, th I think the best you could say. I think Kieran, I think Robbo, I, anyone who played Terry, anyone who played would, would have all been queued up to play alongside him. Um, and we had a spell when we played 4-3-3, and he played off the right. With Terry down the middle and Kevin Ledbetter on the left. Uh, and he was outstanding there, and it was great. There's another one, Leddy, you know, great, great spells with me. Uh, should have stayed in and around it a lot longer, uh, but football and probably the emergence, the likes of Sean, Bates, or whatever. But Leddy was another one right on me, all front of uh, me thoughts. The thing is, you're saying 500 games of Southport, but on top of that, managed Runcorn for three years, Bears go for two. Telford and Staley Bridge three between them. I said, so I've had another eight years away. So, uh, but it, again, the spells, the spells at Southport, you know, probably always thought, oh, 05, 06, I should, you know, I shouldn't have left the club. That wasn't my decision, but I should never have left the club. Um, 13, you know, I, I had to leave the club. It was, it, that, was, that was my decision. Um, and then you, you look at now and I said there's been that much change, there's that much, but you, you walk out and you go, the pitch looks amazing, the stand looks amazing, uh, got, we've put an, an, an incredible amount of players higher up in the pyramid, we've won a lot of trophies, I've had some unbelievable lads in around me, I've had unbelievable assistants and staff, um, and it, it goes on and on and on. You know, I said, you know, people forget Lee Turnbull was in massive. He, he came in as assistant, and um, you know, we, we looked like we were really struggling in the conference. And you know, Lee was very much uh, more experienced than me in that way, and was a really good, calm and influence. Uh, great coach as well, uh, all the way down to Macha now. You know, got the utmost respect for Macha. Uh, brilliant coach, lovely man, honest, genuine fella. Uh, so every one of them I've worked with, you know, they've all had a big input, they've all had a big thingy. So I've had a few chairs as well, uh, different boards and, you know, which you never thought that would have happened to Southwell where it's changed, but obviously it's changed again this year from, you know, sort of like filling Ian to Prime Man Just Ian. Uh, obviously Charlie, you know, he was good enough to give me the job all them years ago. Uh, and, I th and I think at the time, we were both very, very good for one another. Um, but, you know, things change in football, things people move on, go their own way. But, yeah, I've always said I've been incredibly proud to manage the club. Uh, I never ever thought you'd get 500 games in. Uh, you know, I said it's always been a bit of a poison chalice to, to most people, the Southport job. I think it's been a difficult club at times to manage, but it's also given you some unbelievable highs. So, even when we, you know, last year, the, the FA Cup, game against Chami was an unbelievable high, Sheffield Wednesday, you know, and the, the FA Cup seemed to come along when we needed a boost, 
you know, we weren't challenging for, for promotion or to win a league. It's normally in the conference when that period of, you know, you, you, you always have spells in the conference. Like, you, you see now stop all around the wobble, surely about to wobble. It's such a big gulf. So, and, and that's what probably people don't ever, ever think. I probably, I've probably only managed one more year in the North than I have done in the National. So, um, it was brilliant, brilliant learning curve. And when you look at the likes of Chris Wilder and you know, he's now in the Premier League, but great fella, down to earth. And you, so you, you, you've met you know, so many really top people through, through your career, but I, I'm probably always associated I, with Southport, which, you know, which, which is nice for me. It's, it's nice for me, my kids, my family, you know, they've seen all the good times and hopefully they'll see a lot more good times.